Hey there. Welcome back for day 97 of Life According to Yobo. How you doing with your little old blessed life? How you doing? Living what? The best life. Well, I tell you what we're doing. We're working our way on up the mountain. We started out on January 1st with book one, Life According to Yobo. We learned how to rid our life of mess, stress, and other people's BS. A 60-day journey. On day 61, we began to maximize our potential. You know, I had to uh, share a quote from Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey said, so many people are sitting with their parachute, all their potential, in a backpack with a parachute and afraid to take the jump. But see, that's not going to be our story. We're going to go ahead and jump because we know. What do we know? It's not going to happen overnight. Many people take the jump, but they give up. They allow time to kill their vision. But if you keep on journeying, if you refuse to give up, one thing that you are going to find, you are going to find that people will encourage you on your journey. Is the vision divine or is it in your mind? We went through some things. Dreams come in different ways. We talked about that the last few days. And now we are on intuition. Let me find my right page. Another way. Visions come, divine visions, through intuition. My book is at yoboproductions.com. You can watch these videos on YouTube, Facebook, and follow me on Twitter at Silly Yobo. Intuition. Oprah calls it the whisper. I always have known it as a still, small voice. My colleague, Lakeisha Newman McClendon, refers to it as her best friend named something. So when you hear me talk about my best friend, something, that's actually a phrase I stole from Lakeisha because it makes so much sense. You know, say, for instance, you go to the mall and you park your car and something says, don't park your car here. Then when you come out, some fool has backed into your car, didn't leave a note or anything. All you have is your car with the bumper hanging off. What's the first thing you say? Oh, Golden, something told me not to park my car there. Well, that's why she calls it our best friend, something. Warren Buffett calls it his gut. He said he has learned to trust his gut. This is a man who has amassed wealth, fame, success, and when asked, what is your key to success? You know what the man said? I trust my gut. If my gut's telling me don't do it, I don't do it. If I have peace within, then I make the move. My mama just straight up said the Holy Ghost. She said, you better listen. The Holy Ghost will speak to you. And when the Holy Ghost speaks, baby, you better listen. Whatever name you choose to describe intuition, it's all the same. It's a voice that only I can hear. It's a voice that only you can hear. It's not something really audible in our ear. It's something deep down on the inside. Think back when something had told you, don't date him, girl. Don't give him your phone number. But you gave him your phone number anyway. Or just think when someone said, don't marry that girl, dude. Don't marry... Your mama said it, your sister said it, everybody said it. And even your best friend something said, don't marry that girl. You better call the law, don't do it. But you did it anyway. Whatever it is, it is imperative that you know the source of the voice. Because sometimes there's some people that say they heard a voice. I heard something tell me to go to the school and kill everybody. Go shoot everybody. That has happened. But divine intuition is never spooky, is never silly, and is never messy. I know some people who really have a gift. They have that gift of intuition. They see things beyond this natural realm. But some of them can just be so spooky, you know. Who? Well, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone, okay? Another way you would know if your vision is divine. We talked about intuition. Now we're going to talk about signs. The old saints in church, when I was growing up 50 years ago, you know, church has changed now. It's not like it was 50 years ago. 50 years ago, you couldn't wear pants. You couldn't shout if you didn't have on a girdle. 
And if you did shout, they would take one of the old choir robes and they'd wrap it on you because you wasn't going to be in the church jumping and jiggling. Honey, child, now, shoot, you go to church, you see more in the church than you do in the strip bar. Women jiggling and hopping around, booty flapping like this. They bend over, oh, glory. And you see the uh, the top of their uh, the thong, breasts all out and jumping and jiggling. You better not try to cover them up. Shh. Oh, no. Church has changed a lot over the last 50 years. Well, let me tell you one thing 50 years ago that you couldn't do, other than wearing pants, other than having a baby, and you still get to sing in the choir. Mm-mm, oh, Lord, mm-mm. You weren't doing none of that. The old folks said, you did not ask God for a sign. That was like a sin if you asked God for a sign. And my mama even said, no, baby, you just trust God. I think they felt as though it was a sign of unbelief if you asked God for a sign. But I'm going to tell you, there have been times in my life where I have asked God to give me a sign. One instance forever stands in my mind. It was in October 2002 when I was counting down the days to leaving my job. This particular day, I forgot my lunch money. I could have borrowed $10 from anybody. I had three bosses. I had my two best friends at work. I had the person next to me. Anybody would have given me $10. But I knew I was leaving my job and I was leaving my paycheck. I was leaving my health insurance. I was walking away from all my security. So this day, I asked God for, I asked God for a sign. I said, Lord, this is what I... I promise you that I'm getting ready to tell you what I really said. I got it written right here on the computer, and I'm reading it. This is what I really, for really, really, really said. I said, Lord, if you're going to really take care of me after leaving this job, prove it to me by providing lunch for me today. I looked at the clock. It was 1130. I stayed right there at my desk. I waited for somebody to stroll by and invite me to lunch. They all left. Nobody said a word to me. The noon hour came and the noon hour went. It was 1 o'clock. Then the clock said 1.30. So, you know, my stomach was growling. I was hungry. Whew. Just waited and waited. Now, remember I told you, time will kill your vision. I said, Lord, provide lunch for me at 11.30. It's now 1.30. And there I was in my chair. I did not move. Sometimes God will test you while you're asking for a sign. He will test you to see if you can remain obedient, if you can wait on the vision. I already told you God doesn't have a clock in heaven. He don't have a watch in heaven. It's no calendars in heaven. So I sat there at 1.37 p.m. My phone rang. So by then, I had forgotten all about lunch. It was my coworker, Gloria Urrutia. She said, Yolanda, she was real soft-spoken, Yolanda, I didn't see you at the shower. And I'm thinking, what shower? I made cheese enchiladas. Do you want some? Lord Jesus, do I want some of Gloria's cheese enchiladas? That's like asking, is water wet? Heck yeah, she made the best cheese enchiladas in the world. And I was hungry too. She came to my desk and she said, we didn't have many people at the shower. I have an extra pan. Would you like to take it home? Heck yeah, I wanted to take her pan of enchiladas home. Then she invited me to the lunchroom. Let me tell you something about Munger, Toes, and Olsen. When there was a shower or a meeting and there was leftover food, it didn't last very long. You always had the scavengers who came in and ate everything. This particular day, there was all kind of fixings. There was a salad that Vivian made with nuts and with fruits and all kind of vegetables. And she had two types of uh, buried, uh, buried flavor dressing. There was cake. There was even punch left over. The Lord provided my lunch for me that day. He not only provided me something to eat, but I mean, I was all the way hooked up that day and I had food to take home that night. That was my sign that I was going to be okay. Remember, divine intuition, divine vision come through intuition and they will come through signs. Something's going to tell you, you better not give up. Or something's going to tell you 
there's more you should be doing in life. And there's always a sign. And don't you be scared to ask God for a sign. See you on tomorrow.